right, so you know a little bit about what a PA is and what they do. And now you're wondering, how can you become one? Well, I got you. I'm gonna tell you all about it in this video right here. Being a PA is pretty easy, actually. All you have to do is just get into PA school, which is super competitive, graduate PA school, which is a very rigorous program, and pass your boards exam, or PANS. It's really not a big deal. It's really not a big deal. Hey fam, my name is also fam and my channel is about all things physician assistant. This particular video you already know is going to be about how to become a PA. If you are generally interested in this career, then get ready. It's going to be a lengthy journey, but we're going to break it down step by step right now. Starting with number one, you need to have a bachelor's degree in anything. It really doesn't matter. No, seriously, you can have your bachelor's in aerospace engineering or you can have it in dance. It really doesn't matter. As long as you have your degree, you are eligible to apply. A lot of students do tend to complete their undergrad in science-based majors, but it is not a requirement. What is a requirement is that you complete all the prerequisites for PA school. If you already have your degree in, let's say, biochemistry, and you happen to have all your prerequisites taken care of, then go apply. But if that's not you, then listen, okay? Listen. Take a deep breath. Are you doing it? Okay. Give yourself some time. You need to be honest with yourself and you need to set realistic goals. Depending on how many classes you have to take, this might take months to a year or more to complete every single step needed before applying to PA school. Something else to consider is that these prereqs may have an expiration date. So depending on what program you're applying for, some schools will not accept your courses if they were taken more than 10 years ago. So if you're someone watching this in 2021 and you took these classes, say, in 2011 or earlier, it may be safer for you to just retake them. To be honest, some schools don't even consider classes that were taken more than seven years ago. And in reality, you want to be prepared for PA school. You don't want to have taken, let's say, biology seven to ten years ago and you barely remember a thing when you're actually in PA school. We don't really want that anyway. So I recommend you revisit your courses and see if you might need to retake a few classes or maybe take a refresher course or take a higher level course in the same subject. Number two. You need to start taking all the necessary prerequisites unless you already have them. So what are these prerequisites you might wonder? Well, here is a general list. General chemistry one and two with lab. Organic chemistry one and two with lab. Biochemistry, preferably with lab. Biology one and two with lab. Anatomy and physiology, of course, with lab. Microbiology with lab. Statistics, English, psychology, medical terminology, and public speaking. That most schools will require some or all of these prerequisites, but all schools are different. Some schools have a few extra classes, some schools don't have half the things that I mentioned on the list. They just care for the core science classes. You have to do your research on that one school that you're interested in, or however many schools you're interested in, because they all may have different requirements. Again, you can complete these in a couple months or it might take you a couple semesters to have it all done. Number three. So you're interested in the field and you're taking all these classes, but while you're doing this, you need to start gaining experience in the field as well. The best thing you can do for yourself is go shadow a PA. Go shadow multiple PAs in multiple different settings because no two PAs have the same job because they're always going to be a little different. This is the best time to start reaching out to private practices, hospitals, or wherever you plan on shadowing a physician assistant. You need to start working on establishing a relationship and building these connections now because in the future, you are gonna need them for a job or for a volunteer opportunity or for a letter of recommendation. So might as well get started now. Number four. So now you have completed your bachelor's or you're still completing your bachelor's while also working on your prereqs at the same time and you have gone and shadowed a few PAs in different settings, now it's time to get your foot in the door. So what I mean by that is now you have to start working in these facilities, preferably close to a PA. You can start out by volunteering, but what you really want to do is turn that into a job. So you can go work at even front desk managing paperwork for patients or you could go be a technician at a clinic or whatever it is that you're able to do get started now so that you can start gaining all those experiences because you're gonna need a lot of healthcare experience and patient care experience hours to get competitive in order to be competitive in the application process you want to have as many hours as you can I'm not saying go crazy and have 60,000 hours I mean you can if that's what you want 
but you want at least a year of consistent hours to show that you're interested, you have exposure in multiple settings, and you understand what you're getting yourself into. Which brings me to number five. So you're done taking all your prereqs, you have gained a lot of experiences, you have shadowed multiple PAs, pretty much you have done everything I have told you to do until this point. Now you're gonna go take the GRE, the admissions test. You're done with your classes already and hopefully you're still working at a healthcare facility. So while you're working, maybe you can figure out how you can start studying for the GRE at the same time. You can work part-time, study part-time, or take a break from work. However you wanna prepare for the GRE, that's up to you. But do give yourself enough time to get ready for the exam because you don't wanna just walk in and take it and then get a bad score and then you have to repeat the test. That is just a waste of money. Number six. You have a really good amount of hours, you have your letters of recommendations, you have completed your degree, you're done with all your prerequisites, and you have taken the GRE. Now what? Congratulations, you have made it this far. Now it is time to apply. To apply to PA school, you're gonna go through something called CASPA. This is a centralized application process where all your information goes in one place and it gets sent out to different PA schools depending on whoever you chose. CASPA stands for the Centralized Application Service for Physician Assistants. And if you know anything about CASPA, it can be a little time consuming. It could be a little daunting to fill out that entire application process, which is why I will be making a video about how to fill out CASPA step by step coming up very soon. The whole process of applying to PE school can be pretty intimidating. Sometimes you feel like you're putting in all this work and you're seeing no results, but that's just how the process is sometimes. If you have any questions about anything that I mentioned in this video, please comment below and I'll respond to you as soon as I can. So if you're interested in how to be a PA, which I think you are, you're watching this video, I recommend you subscribe to my channel because I will be making videos every single week about all things PA. Thank you for watching.